The latest criticism against the president surfaced an ideological revolution within the political establishment. One America's Alex Salvi takes a look at how the platform of each party is changing based on where the president stands on the issue. President Trump is not your typical conservative, but many of his positions are being adopted by the Republican Party. And with his critics looking to oppose his every move, many Democrats are taking positions that are at odds with their traditional practices. Take, for example, the situation in Venezuela, where the White House was voicing its support for opposition leader Juan Guaido, but stopped short of military action. Well, I have great respect for uh, the man that most people, many people think is the real president of Venezuela. Uh, he's very brave. It's a very brave situation, what he's doing, as you know. I've seen what's happened in the streets, and I've seen what's happened with executions, so I, I really give him a lot of credit. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to work out very well. This falls in line with the president's anti-interventionalist approach, as exemplified by troop withdrawals in Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq. On the surface, it appears as if MSNBC has sacrificed its traditional philosophy in its effort to oppose the Trump administration, including in regard to Venezuela. The network, which has long been accused of being a mouthpiece for liberal policies, seems to have adopted a more neocon stance when it comes to intervention. Rachel Maddow, in her trademark fashion, claims the president's decision not to intervene in Venezuela is because of Russian President Vladimir Putin's support for the Maduro regime. But to be clear, her desired result is more intervention. Hey, John Bolton. Hey, Mike Pompeo. Are you guys enjoying your jobs right now? You each thought your job this week was to name and shame and threaten and counter Russian government involvement in Venezuela while saber rattling about every, how everybody else better get out of the way because the U.S. is really mad about it. Guys, turns out your actual job is figuring out how and why you work for a president who says whatever Vladimir Putin tells him. Did you ever think you'd see the day where Rachel Maddow, a staunch critic of the Iraq war, doesn't think John Bolton is hawkish enough when it comes to foreign policy? Even further, did you ever think you'd see the day where a Democrat berates the president for putting his foot down when it comes to military action in another country? Just to highlight this shift in political ideologies, that very same week, Tucker Carlson on Fox News spoke out against intervention, comparing it to failed regime change policies in the Middle East, which resulted in thousands of American deaths. But it's not only on the issue of international affairs. The president has also faced criticisms for his imposition of tariffs during trade negotiations. I do not support the president's decision to enter this trade war, to levy additional tariffs which will provoke reciprocal tariffs, which are going to hammer this economy. Uh, farmers, growers and ranchers who are trying to feed not just this country, but so much of the rest of the world. By their very nature, tariffs are antithetical to free markets, which makes sense why they've received pushback from many conservative fiscal hawks in Washington. However, the concept that was once championed by liberals is now at the heart of their criticisms, presumably because of the man who's now the face of the tactic. When it comes to trade, we need fair trade. Look, there's currency manipulation, intellectual property theft. There's all kinds of bad behavior going on uh, on the Chinese side. If we want to reverse that, reduce that, then there has to be some sense that we're going to come to the table and negotiate something better, not just lobbing tariffs over the fence. President Trump is outspoken about his intentions to shake things up in politics, but he may be setting a precedent for a legacy that will live long after his tenure. We've already seen self-described Republicans, such as Ana Navarro of CNN or Jennifer Rubin of The Washington Post, be rejected by members of the party because their views don't fall in line with the beliefs of the constituents. Only time will tell if the president's policies will leave with him when he departs from the White House or be instilled in the platforms of both the Republican and Democrat Party agenda. Alex Salvi, One America News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.